Welcome to this training course on disaster risk communication in the new normal. I'll be taking you through the situation analysis. At the end of this lesson, participants should be able to define situation analysis, describe risk and risk information, describe risk perception and risk perception factors, and describe risk management options. The agenda for this course will be first, understanding risk, risk data, and risk information. Then we'll move into risk perception, followed by risk management, and then we'll end off with risk communication situation analysis. What is risk? Risk is a combination or interaction of three components, hazards, exposure, and vulnerability. The equation to estimate risk is risk equals hazard times exposure times vulnerability. A prob it is also a probability that an event will occur. To paint a picture of risk in certain location and over time, data from the above three components can be used. When it comes to risk data, it can be categorized into one, hazard, two, vulnerability, three, exposure, four, base data, and five, risk, as shown in the figure to the right. The following are some available sources for key risk data sets. Please feel free to take a look at these at your own time. So what is risk information? Well, risk information can be defined as comprehensive information on key components of risk, including capacity related to persons, communities, organizations, and countries and their assets. It can be used to understand the risk drivers and underlying risk factors. It is also the foundation for four areas of disaster risk management decision-making, including risk reduction, preparedness, financial protection, and resilient reconstruction. So now we move on to the second point, which is risk perception. So what is risk perception? Well, it can be an impression, a subjective judgment or a belief held by an individual, group, or society about the chance of occurrence of risk or hazards, or about the extent, magnitude, and timing of its effects. Risk perception, including risk, is perceived by individuals differently. Why is risk perception important in risk communication? Expert and public views risk differently. This can affect the desired behavior change in the risk communication. In the face of uncertainty, people employ mental strategies known as heuristics for decision-making, but not risk information. Lastly, public outrage is high when hazards are unfamiliar, involuntary, and affect ge future generations, and cannot be seen catastrophic in consequence, unfair in distribution of harm and benefits, and can be potentially fatal. What are the factors that determine risk perception? Well, first of all, we can have a look from the individual level in Maslow's hierarchy of needs. We can also look at the individual and social value of uh, risk perception. Furthermore, we can look at the culture, the level of education, outrage factors, 
who the person is and how she or he is affected and the level of control over the events and experiences. When it comes to looking at the factors or th that determine risk perception, sorry, I'm just going to redo this part. What are the factors that determine the risk perception? As you can see in the table below, we can divide it between individuals and collectives. When it comes to cognitive affective factors, on the individual level, this could include knowledge and beliefs and behavior and affective skills. However, for collectives, this would only be limited to information, shared knowledge and evaluation. Moving on to social political factors, you'll notice that on the individual level, the main problems would be socioeconomic status, social and political skills. However, with collectives, it can expand from socioeconomic to environmental impacts, values, policies, participation and decision making. Lastly, from the cultural backgrounds, You'll notice that at an individual level, it concerns the personal identity and sense of meaning, worldviews and education levels. On the collective side, this would include cultural institutions, which include political, societal and economic culture and experiences. How to address the issues of risk perception of the public? Well, as you can see in the figure below, there's three main factors. This includes trust, benefits, and control. Moving on to the next part of the agenda is number three, risk management. According to the risk management framework, Risk management is an inter international standard issued in 2009 to serve to all types of organizations to address risk. This framework is widely adopted, including in the disaster management field. It can be used by anyone who manages risk, not only professional risk managers. When it comes to the linkages with risk communication and risk assessments, in 2009, the World Health Organization and UN Food and Agricultural Organization developed a risk analysis framework to depict interaction between risk assessors, risk managers, and those affected by risk. You can see a figure summarizing the key points of this framework to your right. What is disaster risk management? It aims to strengthen the resilience and reduce disaster losses by applying disaster risk reduction policies and strategies to prevent new disaster risk, reduce existing disaster risk, and manage residual risk. According to the United Nations Office on Disaster Risk Reduction, DRM consists of four key options prevention, preparedness, mitigation, and transfer. Now we move to the final part of this agenda, which includes risk communication situation analysis. So what is risk communication situation analysis? Well, first off, it is an important step in the risk communication planning. It also aims to identify the risk communication needs and focus areas. Lastly, it can be conducted before or after an event occurs. So how to conduct a situation analysis? It's a very common format for conducting situation analysis, which comprises of the following. Knowledge, awareness, and perceptions among at risk and other groups, social, political, economic context, media coverage, government and partner risk communication, emerging risk communication issues, and recommended changes to messaging and risk communication activities. 
what are the methods for conducting situation analysis? Situation analysis should be participatory in nature. The most common methods used for conducting situation analysis are literature review, consultation workshop, consultation with government departments, key informant interviews, SWOT analysis, and a problem three. Thank you very much for your attention and best of luck with the rest of the course.